going on, guys? What's happening out there? What's up? This is Sebastian Swick and Eric Castellanos, and we are Amazon Lit, bringing you that Amazon content, yes. that fire, yes. that real life Amazon seller content. It's what we do for a living. Now we're here to kind of show you guys, you know, how to sell on Amazon. As Amazon continues to grow, uh, and anyone who tells you otherwise, anyone who tells you that Amazon isn't growing or Amazon is oversaturated or Amazon isn't for third-party sellers, they just don't have the information, right? You know. So when you hear a seller or a uh, you know a guru say, "Do you want to make one million dollars a month?" Right, there's, there's a huge misconception and it's very misleading because what they're talking about is revenue, right? They're talking about gross revenue. In that, yeah, sales, so total sales. In that, what's not accounted for is item cost, shipping fees, business expenses like labor, boxes, supplies, warehouse rent, right? And I know for us, our item cost is about 40% of our total revenue. Uh, shipping fees is about another 25 to 30%. You know, and then we have referral fees, and then we have our employees and our staff, and all of those percentages just keep eating away at that sales revenue until you're left with, with the bottom line profit, right? Like what actually comes back into the company. Net profit. Net profit. And what we do with that, and most of it, is reinvest it back into the company because we're trying to grow a large monster uh, Amazon business and, and it's and it's working so just be mindful that when you hear somebody and you see that advertisement on Facebook like do you want to make a million dollars next month and, and you're like yeah I'm, I'm miserable at my job I want to make a million dollars next month right it's it's completely different you know gross revenue sales to net profit margin it's it's night and day so just be mindful of that it's not I'm not telling you not to get excited because still, you know, if you're, if you're pulling in 8%, uh, you know, net, net profit on a million dollars in sales, you're still pulling in 80 grand a year after all your expenses, which is more than most people make at their nine to five. So there's a lot of opportunity, but the million dollars, yeah, I mean, we had students, you, you just had a consultation with uh, one, you know, doing 10,000 a month in profit. Yeah. You know, so, and, and we have, you know, dozens of students that are, you know, by one guy, he's doing half a million in revenue a month, but he runs a business by himself. He's got about a 13% margin, but his expenses are super low, tiny, you know, small warehouse, and, uh, you know, I've, I've helped him bring it to the next level, but he's really helped himself. I just I just gave him some ideas. He took those ideas and, and blossomed with him and continues to grow. But what Eric said, man, is it's, it's so true, you know, I, and making a million as a company versus making it as as net profit is two completely different things and, and not to be discouraged like he said it just it takes hard work you know we're we're not here to sell you guys this quick dream you're gonna make the money you're gonna be driving the Lamborghini you know it takes hard work there, there's some luck that comes into play for some people but everyone we talk to it takes hard work you know we were just at a show where we got to see uh, this guy speak about how he sold his company for 100 million after a few years but he was putting 18 20 hours in and he had a great idea but he, he, he pushed it and he continues to push the envelope and so do we and you know and yes we're here to share with you our Amazon business but we're so much more than that we are a retail business slash experience you know we want to provide to our customers the wholesale opportunities because we also deal with businesses we want to provide to Amazon customers which we treat like our own the experience and that's why we have a hundred percent satisfaction rate with hundreds of thousands of reviews literally hundreds of thousands of reviews on Amazon and, and then we do the same thing when we're looking right now into brick and mortar opportunities as well uh, providing the experience and with our private label brands as well you know providing experience and providing to them more than what they were expecting right under promising and then over over, over delivery yeah yeah and so with that being said 
um, it, it's going to take a lot of work. So a lot of people, they're like, hey, how can I work five hours a week? And I tell them straight up, we tell them all, you can. If you want to build something that's just bigger than you can even fathom, you're not going to work five hours a week. Maybe in 10, 15 years, once you have systems in place and processes and employees, you can step away and grow other businesses and, and only put you know, 10, 15 hours a week into that business. But early on, you're going to be have long days, late nights, early mornings, sleepless. It's just going to stress. It's a lot of work. If you want to grow a sustainable business that's going to last you a lifetime and maybe last generations, you have to put the work in. Now, if you want it to be a part-time investment with part-time results, you can do that as well. We got you know to where we are today by busting our butts. You know, there's other people that get there through ingenuity and creativity. We got there through that, but more so through hard work. Yes, really, sweat equity. We really worked, you know, we worked our butts off and we, and we still do to today, you know. We have the liberty of traveling the country and going to a lot of trade shows and networking and building our future uh, because we put the efficiencies into our operation where now it's a standalone and we can walk out and still be profitable because we have systems and people in place there that keep our operating operation running and fruitful. But when, when we're gone for a week, you know, being the uh, the heads of the company and, and, and understanding what happens in the ins and outs of the daily operations, there's a lot to do when we get back. You know, so it's not like we've been able to step away the company and we just travel the country. Like we're still got our hands in the day-to-day -day operations, buying, researching, streamlining efficiencies, improving the warehouse production, you know, going through our stranded and excess inventory, repricing, uh, building relationships with wholesalers and distributors, uh, researching private label products, paying attention to the top and bottom line. Like those are things we do on a day-to-day on -day basis, even when we travel. It's a lot of hard work, but it allows us to have so many liberties. Um, you know, and it's, it's a blessing to, to have something that you've grown from the bottom and, and watch it just blossom and watch it continue to prosper and know that, hey, these are your ideas that you're putting in on a day-to-day -day basis which are providing you, validating what, what you're doing. Uh, you know, there's no better experience than that. So if anything I would say about the nine to five, you know, it's not about this, I, I'm not about the, the shitty boss. There are shitty bosses, but there's also great bosses out there. Um, there's all shitty jobs out there, but there are also great nine to five jobs out there that are very validating. But for myself, what was the most validating was being able to see that the ideas that we were implementing were becoming fruitful and then rapidly blossoming. It, it, it's an experience like no other. Yeah, nothing's better than really implementing a new system or a new process or a new change in your company. And then we're sitting down as a, as a team with the managerial staff and reviewing the profit margins and the revenue and the sales and how many orders are coming through and the customer feedback and the returns and sitting down and reviewing them collectively as a group and really seeing how those changes that we implemented the month previous, two months previous are having an impact on those numbers. It's, it's very rewarding. And sometimes it's, it doesn't always work and you make adjustments accordingly. Right, right. And, and we don't consider them failures. We look at them as learning experiences because we do get to learn from them. And, and, and the truth is, I mean, how many thousands upon tens of thousands of dollars do people spend on school and then they don't even take that degree and utilize it in, in their career paths? Uh, well, what happens here is we might spend a couple thousand dollars and have a learning experience where what we were thinking was going to work out doesn't work out, but then we learn from that experience, we make changes, because insanity is if we repeated the same thing over and over again, literally that's the definition. So we don't want to be insane, we make changes and, and then we try something else. And, and usually the second time around it works. If it doesn't, third, fourth time it always does. But we continue to make changes, we continue to drive ingenuity, creativity, and, and find new ways to continue to grow. Because as a business owner, first thing you have is yourself, and as long as you're working on yourself and growing yourself, it, everything seems to just kind of fall in line. And you know, we've been able to streamline those efficiencies and, and take a look at those processes and, and, and create you know, production stations and, and, and staff meetings and managerial meetings and, and be all in line together collectively as a family.
because at Amazon Lit we are a family and we treat our staff like family and that's why we, you know, we have a, a very low turnaround rate with our employees, most of them, you know, 90 to 95 percent of them will start with us, stay with us because we treat them with the respect that they deserve as valued members of our team. Yeah, we, we remember that we were not always bosses and know how it could be to have that crappy boss as well. And we don't want to repeat that. We want people that want to come to work because then they take care of our company better, which then in return takes care of our customers better. So by starting, and that's like the Costco philosophy. If you ever look at Costco, you go into Costco versus some of the other clubs, you'll notice that uh, the employees there are more, A, they're more knowledgeable, and B, they're just more helpful than some of the other wholesale clubs, and it's because A, they pay them better, B, they respect them. I don't want to go into the respect factor, but they pay them better and they and they understand their value. Let's put it there. They understand the value that their employees bring, and then guess what? That gets reciprocated uh, to the customer and, and you know, back and forth, mirror image. So what they provide to the employees, like what we provide to our employees, gets passed on to our company and passed on to the customer. And this is a little side note, but now that he's talking about Costco, it got me thinking about an article I read the other day, and really I think it expresses the importance of of taking losses in a business to grow the business. Early on, we took a lot of losses to kind of grow a large business and gain you know, a lot of customer reviews and a high customer feedback rating and become a monster on Amazon.com. And in the article I was reading, it was talking about how uh, Costco loses over a million dollars a year in its food sales. So it basically gives food away just to get customers in the door because they know once they're in the door, you know, Costco's average unit cost is probably right around $20. Yeah. So if they buy one unit, you know, they might give them a, a discounted hot dog that they're not making any money on or a slice of pizza, but they're getting them for, you know, two, three units at a time. Some people buy, buy stuff for their whole store in there, you know, or, or parties and they go spend hundreds of dollars. So it's like they take a loss for the long term to get the gain. And like Amazon does, they both the membership. They make, yeah. I, I, in the billions, I think, on membership, hundreds of millions of in membership uh, fees every year. So yeah, it's um, well, it, it, it's it's really about understanding your employees, and then of course understanding the customers. Um, and customers so, number one. Yeah, yeah, customers number one. But right there with them is your employees, and there's no way you're gonna retain customers if you're not taking care of your employees. But you know, but Abbott, if you're starting off small and you're just getting into an Amazon business and you're working by yourself, a one-man team, like like the early days of, of us, like what what happens then? Like how, how can how can somebody watching this for the first time and thinking about getting into Amazon? What what should they be doing? They should just get started selling, you know, list some products up. Do we started with, with retail arbitrage, going to our local grocery stores, the wholesale clubs, buying, starting with ones and twos, and then going to fives and tens, and then we're getting vanfuls, which turned into to pallets, right? So I would just say the best way to start is to just start, make mistakes, figure it out. There's tons of content out there, YouTube videos, um, information. It's endless. Tons of content. And, and Eric couldn't say it better. Like, there's an opportunity. When, when we started in 2013, there was the content wasn't there yet. There wasn't YouTube about selling on Amazon. There wasn't all the different apps and services provided. I mean, at the Chicago show, we were, we were at the, um, the hundreds, hundreds of, of different companies that service e commerce. That wasn't so back then. You know, there was even a repricer at that point. Um, so, you know, we've learned and we've been able to scale our business by looking at other businesses. We've had opportunities to sit down with companies that weren't e-commerce and they helped us grow because we went into some of these large wholesale companies and saw the efficiencies that they had set up in their operations. We learned about steps and movements and, and how to kind of eliminate steps to help with efficiencies. Um, processing lines which we've implemented and these aren't ideas that we had of our own these are ideas that we got from people that you know even though they're not direct mentors they're like indirect coaches and mentors because they had these fruitful successful businesses and we took some of that information and that's part of the reason we provide it to you you know a lot of the people that we work with you know I you know they they know our value and I tell them like listen you could 100% do this on your own there's no reason you would 
need us to help you because we did it on our own, but you do need to look for information from others who have been there before you to help eliminate the wasted time. Because yeah, you'll get there, but it might take you four years to figure out those mistakes versus being informed or you know, watching people like us, watching others out there who are also successful and taking and kind of mimicking their processes and then also tweaking it because you can make it better if you're the next generation coming into the play. Yeah, and don't be scared to invest in your, in your future, right? Like this trip we're on now, it's an investment in our future. We're learning a lot from veterans in the industry. It, what it does, what it does is it changes your mindset. It's like traveling the world, things that change your mindset. People forget the value, and not everyone, I'm, I'm saying I forget it too, but sometimes we, let me say, because it happens to me, I get, I get stuck in my day-to-day -day operation, I forget the value of just stepping away. What it does is it allows me to think differently, and in those moments where I'm thinking differently, new ideas come into play. I meet new people and new ideas come into play. And you know, I want, if anything I share with you is like, one of the things that upsets me is when the people that we work with, I tell them to get to this trade show, I tell them to go to this workshop, and they're like, listen, I have a shipment coming in, and you know, I really gotta get it out, you know, flip that money, and I understand you have to flip the money, I understand, trust me, we understand more than anyone else about making sure we're flipping the product. You hear Eric every week feeding the beast at Amazon. But at the same time, there's so much unseen value because you can't put a number, you can't put a dollar amount on learning and obtaining new information because you have no idea what it could do. That moment when you step away from your business and go see the industry like we're seeing, go meet with somebody, it could be a game changer, a yeah. game changer for you. So I mean, I think at this point we gotta wrap it up. We have, yeah, we got speaking of meeting people, we have sessions to go to and meet with people because we're out here learning ourselves, taking our business to the next level. Um, and hopefully we were able to provide you guys with a little yeah. bit more insight into who we are and provide you guys with some knowledge and help you take it to the next yeah. level as well. So make sure you smash that subscribe button if you got any comments, questions, concerns, ideas for other videos. Throw them in the comments below. Follow us on social media. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thanks for following us on this journey. And stay lit. Stay lit, guys.